Hi, Johnny! Hey! Hello, Mom! Hey, Mom! She wants her picture taken. Here she is! question is, um, what was it like for you to be a Ball State University student? I think it was a lot of fun when I was here. Um, I like to tell people that you learn a lot more about what you're going to do for a living in the first three weeks you're on the job than you do in college, but you learn more about life in those four years than you do in academics. And how exactly did you get started in the industry? Uh, my first job was at WLAF, uh, just carrier current radio in Fallon. And then uh, I went from there, I started doing some character voices on WNAP in Indianapolis. And that was while I was at Ball State. And uh, following graduation, I wanted a job in television, but ended up uh, not really wanting to leave Indianapolis. So staying in radio, I went to WNDE. Okay, and I understand that you are the uh, face behind the voices, I guess, on Q95. Mm -hmm. How did you get started doing that? And if you don't mind, can you do one of those for us? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I used to uh, do those a lot. I just did voices ever since I can remember. I started really doing my sixth grade teacher, Mr. Greenway. You know him. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> and I just did voices as long as I can remember. And uh, that's how I found myself getting on the radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, that eventually was what I found I had a niche in doing. And so when you find something unique you have to offer, follow that path the best. So. That's what I did, huh? So that's what I do now. That's a very pretty skirt. I have one just like it back in my closet at home. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> okay. Miss you? Okay. And um, how did you get connected with Future Millionaire? Uh, MZD, the advertising agency, had called me when they were pitching the account to the Hoosier Lottery. All of the advertising agencies were pitching the Hoosier Lottery trying to get their account. Uh, they called me and asked me if I would host a presentation for them of a show they had developed because they felt if the lottery used this show, that it would work well. And it ended up being a show totally unlike the one we do now. But we did that, and once MZD won the account, then there were auditions all over the state with the host job. But I had done that tape and had done some test tapes for the lottery, and from that I was hired. So what is it that you like best about the lottery? It's fun to see people's lives change mm -hmm. uh, in a matter of half an hour. And they go from many times not having anything and into something where they're totally comfortable the rest of their life, which is terrific. Right. I've seen quite a few funny things happen on the shows. What is the funniest experience you've had doing the lottery? <laughs> uh, just really some of the people that have been on and, and what they say after they win a million. <laughs> And uh, sometimes some of the things they say on the show that never make the show. Uh-huh. I understand that. And what do you prefer more, radio or TV? Uh, I love both. They, yeah. they both have their advantages. Radio is so much fun. Uh, we just go in and have fun for four hours every morning. But the downside is you got to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Right. Uh, TV, you have to let everybody know what you're doing. Unlike radio, if you feel like saying something, you need to say it. TV, you have to let everybody else know what you're going to be saying so that they can handle that. But I don't have to go in until about 2 in TV. <laughs> so what's next for you after, I mean, are you um, 
happy where you are now, or well, would you I, like to go on? I've kind of got my eye on Dr. Weibel's job. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's been here since the early 1800s. <laughs> and uh, so once, once he hangs it up, I think I'll just kind of move right into that chair. Well, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, for your, your real quick bit for the 25th, <clears throat> 25th anniversary. Do you mind saying something about the 25th anniversary? Anything come to mind that you'd like to say? <clears throat> uh, congratulations, or? OK. <clears throat> we just on the Letterman stuff. You want Mark Patrick's? Okay, we're rolling. Congratulations to Ball State for their 25th anniversary of the telecommunications department. It was just radio and TV when I was there. And also congratulations to Dr. Weibel, who just this last week hit the 4,231st time, unbelievable, of telling someone, go into sales. Sales makes the money, go into sales. Congratulations, and enjoy the party. Great, thank okay. you. Okay. Got it? Oh, yeah. Do you want me to ask him something? Oh, he'll talk. Okay. If, if, if you just ask him, ask him about his daughter. Well, so anyway, about your daughter? she's um, she's 10, and she dates Reggie. <laughs> and, uh, but see, I like it because he makes money. You know, I'd be bothered otherwise, but since he makes so much money. You're okay on time? Simple. About uh, see where you live. I think I live real close to you, Minneapolis. Do you really? know guys? Because mm -hmm. we live up right off Walker Creek Road by 96th Street. Uh, North of 96? Yes. Nope. Yes. So <laughs> Hamilton, Sorry. Southeastern? Well, actually, yeah, I grew up on the east side of town. I went to Warren Central High School, but I moved ah, out there. You What's your dad? He works for um, Indiana Bell. He's um, um, two we so proud years of ago, him. ladies and gentlemen. Is it the Reds question? I'm sorry. He's back from Reds. Really, you remember what the question was? I have no idea. I've been asking this for it. Who, wore, who wore number 29 before Eric Dickerson for the Indianapolis Colts? <laughs> it wasn't Warren, was it? No. Huh? No. It was? No. It was not Warren, right? No, it was not. Thank you. Oh, Warren, <laughs> what's, no, I stumped, no, somebody else stumped Warren with that one. Eh? No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. No. <laughs> well, who was it? Your dream? Well, who answered well, answer the question? <laughs> who, who, was, who was number 29 before Eric Dickerson? Well, uh, Hicks. No, no. Indianapolis. Yeah, when he came. How about Cornelius Bennett? No, no, no. No, he was, oh, okay. See, Tim, you're See? way <laughs> off. He was 97, had he ever signed, but he never signed. So he okay. technically was never, and he was who 97. Else, so see. Who, was, who else was 97? No wonder they never let you shoot sports. Who else was 97? Was that O'Brien Alston's number? Mm-hmm. And still is. That's okay. I don't care. I'm just trying to get him to talk. See, he just, he doesn't know anything. That's why he ends up here. That's what's unfortunate. All, all serious now. <laughs> Need my microphone checked? You're fine. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Just a second. Okay. What was it like for you as a student here at Ball State University? Next one. How exactly did you get started in the industry? One. Okay. Okay. How exactly did you get started in the industry? Um, okay, what was the third one? Okay. Um, I understand that you are the uh, face behind the voices on Bob and Tom's Morning Show Q95. How did you get started doing that, and can you do one of those voices for us? Okay, ready? Yeah. Um, how did you become connected with Who's Your Millionaire? Stay listening, don't smile. Listen, you're listening. Interested, interested. Listening. I'm interested, just a second, I'm thinking here. <laughs> What is it that you like best about doing Who's Your Millionaire? What is the funny... Oh, hang on. What is the funniest thing that you've encountered doing the show? So retarded. Next question. Okay, a little more light on her. Okay. You ready? Yep. Yeah. Since you have worked with both radio and television, which do you prefer the most? Look how long his hair is. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> Try that again. And, okay. and, and keep listening. 
Okay. We need a nice long listening shot. Yeah, we need we need one of you listening to me in reaction. Okay. This is my reaction shot. Mm, uh-huh. I'm gonna ask that question. <laughs> okay. Um since you have worked with both radio and television, which do you prefer the most? And the last one. What are your career goals from this point? Where do you expect to go? Or are you presently happy in what you're doing? That's not at all. I'm going to redo that. Um, how should I word that? I can't. You said something about, um, are you satisfied? Or are you satisfied? I thought you said which one do you like better. I just did that one. I just did that one. Thanks. It's about, are you satisfied uh, where you are now? Or, um, do you plan to move on? Okay. Yeah. Are you satisfied where you are now? Or do you plan to move on in your career? That's all the ones I asked. You have any? Okay. Are you ready? Okay. The chance to win one million dollars is something that we all dream about. But for one lucky person tonight, that dream can become a reality. Thirty-five hundred people jammed in its auditorium Friday evening to witness the shooting of the Hoosier Millionaire Show. Six lucky people. Sorry. Sorry. I forgot my last sentence. Six anxious people eagerly awaited their, their shot at the big price. Okay, got it. Sorry. I'm selling. Huh? I'm selling it. Ready? Okay. A chance at a million dollars is something that we all dream about. But for one lucky person tonight, that dream can become a reality. 3,500 people jam in its auditorium Friday evening to witness the shooting of the Hoosier Millionaire Show. Six anxious people eagerly await their shot at the big prize. Just sit here. Okay. Can I look how she can look at you? <laughs> the chance to win $1 million is something that we all dream about. But for one lucky person this evening, that chance could become a reality. 3,500 people jam in its auditorium Friday evening to witness the shooting of the Hoosier Millionaire Show. Six anxious people eagerly await their shot at the big prize. One more time. Look at this. One more time. That I? Okay, one more time. Slow it down. Slow it down. Okay. Okay. The chance at $1 million is something that we all dream about, but one lucky person tonight, that dream can become a reality. 3,500 people jammed in its auditorium Friday evening to witness the shooting of the Hoosier Millionaire Show. Six anxious, eagerly awaiting. One more time. One more time. One more time. Sorry. Okay. The chance to win $1 million is something that we all dream about. But for one lucky person tonight, that dream can become a reality. 3,500 people jam in its auditorium Friday evening to witness the shooting of the Hoosier Millionaire Show. Six anxious people eagerly await their shot at the big prize. Is that okay?
Barbara, it truly is fantastic to be back here at my alma mater, Boston. I bet it is. But you know, Barb, we dug up some pictures of you from when you were in college that we're all real anxious to see. You and some of your buddies. Where are you there? That's obviously some.